Good morning and welcome to Little by Little, a short time in God's Word. Turn with me again back to Acts chapter 16, and we'll be picking it up in verse 16. Acts 16, verse 16. Once as we were on our way to prayer, a slave girl met us who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She made a large profit for her owners by fortune telling. As she followed Paul and us, she cried out, These men who are proclaiming to you a way of salvation are the servants of the Most High God. She did this for many days. Paul was greatly annoyed. Turning to the Spirit, he said, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. Then it came out right away. When her owners realized that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. Bringing them before the chief magistrates, they said, These men are seriously disturbing our city. They are Jews and are promoting customs that are not legal for us as Romans to adopt or practice. The crowd joined in the attack against them, and the chief magistrates stripped off their clothes and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had severely flogged them, they threw them in jail, ordering the jailer to guard them carefully. Receiving such an order, he put them in the inner prison and secured their feet in the stocks. What? So remember, they're in Philippi, and... They're on their way to prayer, just another regular day. And each day this begins to happen, this pattern happens where this slave girl, possessed by a demon, uh, starts giving them a little PR, if you will. Hey, these guys are servants of the Most High God. Now, was it true? Yeah, they were servants of the Most High God. Um, but Paul didn't want that kind of publicity. He didn't want that kind of notoriety, and he didn't want to encourage that whole field, if you will, the fortune telling and all these things. And so, interesting thought on that uh, fortune telling and these things. It says she made a large profit for her owners. It doesn't tell us, you know, how accurate she was. It doesn't tell us, you know, that she was on target. But it just tells us that she predicted the future. Uh, to various degrees of some sort or fashion. People bought into that and paid money, and it's real, right? There are things out there that you might think, well, I don't know. Well, there's spirits out there that are not spirits of God. They're demons. They're, if you're not a spirit of God, you're a demon, right? That's kind of how it works. There's not other options. And can they be correct at times? Yeah, because they can predict human behavior, they're watching, and these kinds of things. So um, people spend a lot of time, a lot of money, and it's something that we're told to stay away from in the Bible. All that kind of stuff. So whether that's cards, movies, whether that's you know, you're going somewhere to get a reading, or these kinds of things, stay away. Just seek the Lord for your life and for direction. So he casts out the demon because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And the owners are perturbed because their prophet is gone. And so they drag him in before the mob and before the chief magistrates and kind of trump up some charges trying to incite the crowd. And so they beat him, they throw them into jail. Like, all that because they helped this poor woman? This poor girl? Yeah. The enemy takes seriously the things that he's involved in and the things that he does. He doesn't like when you push back against the darkness. But guess what? That's what we're called to do. To stand in the light as he is in the light and proclaim truth. Until next time, I'm going to let it.